welcome to all the men and women of the West. I'm Joe here from East Mako Stan. Hello and greetings. Today we're dealing with chapter three of the Queen of the Black Coast. A chapter I should like by find meh because it deals with lore, yes, but not enough and not enough detail that I like. We find out that the gorilla guys predate mankind, constructed the village, or I should say the city, that the pirates are raiding. The gorillas had achieved a level of civilization and whatnot that humanity could not dream of. They were basically Planet of the Apes, winged apes. The magnetic poles shifted, their waters became poisoned, and when they drink it, they'd go insane. And from that, they then descended to a state worse than the darkest of nightmares of mankind. At least that's how it's described in the text. Driven insane, they began to throw themselves into blood feuds. Then when they became even more barbarous than that, they began committing cannibalism and whatnot. As to mankind, Stygians eventually showed up, or pre-Stygians, I should say, showed up, hoping to find land to colonize, only for them to be chased off. Then dark-skinned barbarians showed up with skulls attached to the prows of their ships, a rather creepy image, and should demonstrate just how barbarous those people were. And then after them came Conan's crew. Conan then awakens shortly after a lot of his men are slaughtered by the gorilla men. He pulls himself free from the Black Lotus, tries to scream to find Nagora and his other men, runs into Nagora who jumps off a cliff, killing himself. And then Conan races off to try and regain his ship where he finds the men slaughtered to a man and Balet hanging from the mast or the yard arm of the galley, dead, D-E-D. Dead. What were your thoughts of this chapter? It was a little trippy, I must admit. Well, it's because he's tripping over yeah. drugs. Yeah, and the history was fascinating, but Howard could have done a bit more to elaborate on it as well. Yeah, I know some people are going to complain about us comparing Howard to Tolkien. Tolkien would have fleshed out the Gorilla Men. And I would have loved that detail, all those details. But I get what Howard's trying to do. They're so mysterious. They stretch so far back in the past, but they defy human comprehension in a way. Their descent into madness, I kind of feel he's kind of giving a warning sign of humanity right now. You know what I mean? Like, we have risen so far above barbarism right now. It's a miracle we've reached this far and, and have come so far. I mean, we have electricity, we've got plumbing. All these things are miracles in a way. If you actually think about it, in comparison to even 70 years ago, what mankind had, or even 200 years ago. It's incredible. And there are places on Earth that don't have any of this. And that's amazing. But how far could we fall if we were to fall? Would we be like the Atlanteans at the beginning of the cataclysm, after the first cataclysm, turning it into barbarians who are barely above apes? Could we fall that far? It's a frightening thing to think about. And it's a very necessary thing for us to think about. Another thought I had about this chapter, it felt like a horror. Oh yeah, it, it is horror based. To think that someone as idealized as the peak of masculinity like Conan would be running through the jungle, fearful for his life. And screaming for his companions. Yeah, it definitely feels like a slasher. I wonder if this is partly what inspired the Predator movie. It gave a feeling like. Then you've got Balet hanging from the yardarm of her galley. And there, it's fitting that she should hang from the mast. Because, I don't know, she lived and died on her ship, in a way. It's fitting. Kind of a devil of her own doing because she disturbed these gorilla men. When she shouldn't have. She had a lot of warning. Do not go there. But she didn't listen. And treasure or no treasure, sometimes it's not worth it. I wonder, on the other hand if Nagora had drunk the local waters. I do wonder, there's some questions here. Conan did compare Nagora to one of the man apes. Yeah, when he ran into him in the jungle. Exactly. I think he scared the living bejesus out of Conan because that was one of his bros and he was just, but I would have liked it if Nagora had been more fleshed out in earlier chapters. But that's all we've got for you for now. Wait till the next chapter to see what we think of that one. And the fifth chapter, of course. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like and that subscribe button as though you were Conan smashing his enemies to itty bitty pieces. 